Hello, writers. Welcome to your first writer's tool shed of spring, week one example story. Hands tight on the sides of her glider, Trisha soared over the canyon, high above the needle sharp rocks, waiting to impale unlucky travelers. She landed on the porous side of the volcano and made her way to the top. Looking into the huge lava filled mouth, she saw steps leading down towards a thousand year old door. Trisha climbed them in careful haste and entered the shrine, where she saw an ancient idol still standing on the altar centuries after its worshippers had all died. Trisha lifted the statue, carved from wood and gilded, although the gold leaf was flaking away. She thought about how it would look on display in the museum back home. Then she heard the whoosh and slam of the door closing. She was trapped. So our first word is impale, which is a verb, to pierce through with a sharp point. These three chickens have been impaled on a spit and now they're being roasted over the fire here. Um, and so impale is like you can impale something with a wooden stake, you can impale something on a sword, you can impale something on anything long and sharp. Uh, if you're writing with it, you can say impale instead of stab. Stab is when you poke something, you know, you stab someone with a sword. But an impale is similar, but with impale, you have the sense of going all the way through. And so like the, the go thing goes in on one side and then it sticks out on the other side and then you're impaled. Porous is an adjective, having many holes or small spaces to let things pass through. And that's uh, a key sense of it, is letting things pass through. The sponge is porous, and you can see all of the holes there, and it's to let the water soak up into the sponge. If a thing is not porous, it means it's not going to let anything through. It has no holes. When you're writing with it, you can also use the word holy with an E. And holy means it has many holes in it, but porous is a more technical uh, kind of official sounding word and holy sounds much more informal and a little bit silly. Haste. Haste is a noun and it means speed of movement. Going somewhere in haste means you're going there as fast as you can. This guy is going to work in haste uh, because he looks like he might be late. When you're writing with it, you can use haste or you can use hurry. Haste is again, more formal and um, official sounding or um, has more uh, noble meaning to it. Um, but hurry also has the sense that you're rushing. It, hurry has a mental aspect to it. Like you're, you're mentally trying to go fast because you're upset or you're, um, you're worried that you're gonna be late. But haste doesn't necessarily have that mental aspect. Haste, you could be going as fast as you can, but your mind is calm, you're clear, you're just going to get where you're going to go. Idol. Idol is a noun, an image of a god used as an object of worship. So this is a golden idol from the ancient Aztec period. Um, if you're writing with it, an idol is a statue, and so you could just say a golden statue, but idol specifies what the statue is used for. And an idol is usually in the shape of a person or an animal. A statue could technically be in the shape of anything. Um, and so idol has that additional level of specificity. Gild, which is a verb to cover with a thin layer of gold. And so you can see here, there's a picture frame and this artisan is taking this very thin layer of, of patterned gold and um, covering the edges of the frames and you can push it down into all of the grooves to make this very um, very thin but closely tucked in closely covered layer and of course you could say paint like i'm going to paint the picture frame with gold but in older times they discovered how to combine those two meanings into one word so you can say it more quickly to say i will gild the picture frame instead of paint it in gold and so that's all for your first week. Uh, go ahead and take a look at the next video, which is going to have your template sentence of the week.